Hi everyone, in today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how to compare two different texts and this is a really good thing to go over especially if you're thinking about the reading assessment for either level 2 or level 1 functional skills English. If you haven't done so already please can you like and subscribe, it really does help us out when you do so. So by the end of the lesson you'll be able to recall how to approach high value questions, understand how to make comparisons, and the final one, apply your understanding to respond to an exam style question. So this is the question we're going to look at then. So it says question 15. The reason why we're starting with question 15 is because this is where we're going to get our higher value questions. Generally, they come further on in the reading assessment. So question 15 is about both documents. Jamie Carter and Campaign for Tomorrow offer different views on public transport. Use one piece of supporting evidence from each document to compare how these views differ. And you can see there it's worth four marks. So as we have a look at this question, then I'd like to think about the following challenges. So first of all, can you identify the key parts of the question? Secondly, can you think about what is meant by the term compare? This is a key skill, not just for functional skills, but also if you're looking to go on and do GCSE as well. And the mega challenge, how do you provide supporting evidence for this question? What do we really mean? When it says you need to provide evidence in response to this question. Now if you want to spend a bit more time looking over this question please feel free to do so. We're now going to jump ahead and look about how we can break down this question and answer it successfully. Class feedback. Check your understanding against the answers below. So for the first one then our challenge, the key elements of the question were things like compare both documents, different views, public transport, evidence, and those are really the kind of main things that we need to be aware of. Actually identifying these is going to allow you to actually think a bit more deeply about what you want to actually focus your response around. Next for our super challenge, when a question asks us to compare, it means the response must identify the similarities or the differences between the two documents. Now, if you've done a few reading assessments before, you'll know that you'll get two different texts or even three different texts, depending on the level you're studying with or the exam board. And these are going to be on the same topic, but there will be some similarities and some differences between the texts. The mega challenge then. To provide supporting evidence, we're required to use quotations. So this is where you extract a key piece of text and write it in your response while using quotation marks. This allows the examiner to understand that you have selected key evidence from the text. And without doing that one, without really providing the quotations, we're not really responding appropriately to the question. So the main important thing, if you get a question where it's asking you to compare two questions, you must provide quotations clearly from both extracts as well to make sure you're addressing the question properly. So before we move on, I'd like to try and stretch and challenge yourself. So how much would you write for a question like this? So we, we could see earlier that it's worth four marks. So what kind of quantity might we need to include when we're looking at our response? Look at document one and identify the key points relating to the exam question. So specifically, then we want to be focusing on what is the writer's view on public transport? Hi, mate. I just wanted to send you this email to explain how awful things have got in Staffordshire since your family moved away. When we were kids, it was so easy to just hop on a bus or a train for a good day out. It was cheap, easy and no hassle. However, these days, using the public transport could be the worst mistake you make. Last week, I was forced to use public transport. They say bad things come in threes, so I really should have been expecting something bad to happen as soon as I had an issue booking my seat online. It took me 45 minutes to book my seat. The website kept refreshing and losing all of my info. Then when I was finally able to pay for the ticket, the confirmation email was nowhere to be found. As if this wasn't bad enough, things only got worse when I got onto the train. So if you want to pause the video here and go through it at your own leisure, please feel free to do so. We're now going to jump ahead and think about some of the main quotations you could identify to show the writer's viewpoint on this issue. Class feedback. Did you identify the following quotations? Which one best shows the writer's viewpoint? So the ones I've selected are, these days using the public transport could be the worst mistake you make. 
Last week, I was forced to use public transport. Things only got worse when I got on the train. And it's really important to think about the um, type of adjectives that are being used, the language that's being used when they're talking about the topic. So, for example, a word like worst is a superlative. That means that it is by far the highest extent of something that you can do. Um, in this case, the worst thing is the highest extent of a bad thing that can happen. You've got last week I was forced to use public transport and you can kind of hear the aggression behind that word forced and things only got worse when I was on the train using again that same word worse which is a superlative that tells me that there's nothing that can really be as bad as that. So before we move on then I'd like you to try and stretch and challenge yourself so think about the quotations we've just looked through and think which quotation best shows the writer's viewpoint and try to justify your answer. All of these will be absolutely fine, but it is kind of important to think about which one has the best impression for you. Which one would you use if this was an actual exam response that you're responding to? Look at document two and identify the key points relating to the exam question. So same as before then, what is the writer's viewpoint on public transport? So I've already looked at the first document. We've looked at the key quotations. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the second text as well. Time to forget fossil fuels. Are you worried about our planet? Are you concerned about the effects of fossil fuels on the environment? Here at Campaign for Tomorrow, we are striving to make a better future for all. One of the best ways we can all work together is by ditching our personal cars and relying more on public transport. Research has shown that public transport has helped to reduce carbon emissions by 20% since 2017. We understand that this is easier said than done. But nothing worth doing is ever easy. For generations we have abused this earth. We have put ourselves in a hole and we have no choice but to do whatever it takes to dig ourselves out of it. We need you to put up with the delays, the expense and yes, even the bad smells that come with using things like buses and trains. Many people would argue, well what about the cost? However, compared to the cost of, a, of tax, insurance and fuel, the price of which seems to rise each week, we all have the potential to save money and, in the process, save the planet. So again, just as before, if you want to pause the video here and go through it at your own time, please feel free to do so. We're now going to jump ahead to look at some of the key quotes that you might have been able to select from that extract. Class feedback. Did you identify the following quotations? And which ones best shows the writer's viewpoint? So the first one we selected then is one of the best ways we can all work together is by ditching our personal cars and relying more on public transport. Number two, public transport has helped to reduce carbon emissions by 20% since 2017. Number three, we need you to put up with the delays, the expense and yes, even the bad smells. And finally, we all have the potential to save more money and in the process, save the planet. Now a good thing to think about as well when you're looking at your quotations is can you identify one that's not going to take you a long time to actually write out. So the first one for example would take quite a long time to actually write out so would there be more appropriate quotation that you could use and again we're thinking about which of these quotations best shows the writer's viewpoint. So think about which one would be the quickest and easiest to write down but also think about which one best conveys the viewpoint and the overall kind of captures the sense that the writer is trying to convey to the audience. Now what we've done now then is we've looked at both of the texts, we've looked at some key quotations and now we're going to think about putting them together to respond appropriately to the question we looked at earlier. So look at the exam response and attempt the challenges that follow. So this is what we've got then, we've got someone who's actually responded to the question and what we're going to think about as we read through it is does the response comment on both documents? Again, this is going to be a real key point for this question. Number two, identify one way that this response could be improved. And the last one, what mark would this response achieve? Try and justify your answers. And once we've gone through this and once you've got a sense of what a good answer looks like or sounds like, then please feel free to attempt the question yourself. And if you want some feedback, obviously we're more than happy to provide that as well. So it says then, in document one, the writer clearly has a negative view towards public transport. This is clear by the range of bad things he identified with things like buses and trains. 
In document 2, however, the writer clearly has a positive view of public transport in the UK. This is shown in the quote, Public transport has helped to reduce carbon emissions by 20% since 2017. This shows there is a massive difference between the two different documents. So again, if you want to pause the video here and go through it at your own leisure, please feel free to do so. Think carefully about what a good response would look like. And if you're not too sure, we're going to also look at the mark scheme in the next slide as well. Fast feedback. Check your understanding against the mark scheme. So this is what the typical mark scheme would look like. This is what your teacher or your assessor is going to be working with. So it was question 15 that was trying to respond to. Jamie Carter and Campaign for Tomorrow offer different views on public transport. Use one piece of supporting evidence from each document to compare how these views differ. I'm going to start off with something that's going to start us off with just getting two marks. So this was out of four in total. So we want two marks and then two marks for something else. OK, so have they made a valid comparison supported by one piece of supporting evidence from document one and one piece of supporting evidence from document two? So essentially, all they're looking for is have you used quotations, actually used evidence from both texts. Now, if we actually think back to the response we just looked at, they didn't do this for both texts. They did provide a quote for one of them, but not for the other. So that's going to obviously mean they're only going to achieve one mark as opposed to two. So to get two full marks, they have to use quotations from both sources. Valid comparisons made, but only one piece of supporting evidence from either document one or document two. And as we can see there, that's only going to achieve one mark. Use one piece of supporting evidence from each document to show a similarity or a difference in the way we've uh, the way the views are conveyed. And you can see there's two marks as well. So essentially to get your full marks, then what we need to make sure we're doing is have we used quotations from both questions and have you actually talked about the similarities or the difference in the views that they're trying to express okay so remember it is a comparison question so not only do we need the quotations but we also need to explain based on that evidence what their difference is or their similarities are regarding their views and then we've got valid comparison of how the views are conveyed supported by one piece of support and evidence from document one and one piece of evidence supporting from document two that will get you one mark uh, valid, valid comparisons made, but only one piece of support and evidence from either document one or document two. A nice little thing they've added at the bottom there, do not penalise spelling. A lot of my learners do worry about that, so it's important to note that in the reading exam, you won't get penalised on your spelling. So that's a good thing to know and hopefully build your confidence there as well. So essentially, when we look at the mark scheme, you should know that if you're not having quotations from both text A or text B or, or source A or source B, whatever they want to refer to it as, then you're not going to get full marks. If you're not talking about the similarities or the differences of each text, you're also not going to get full marks as well. So in terms of our next lesson, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, think about how to answer the full reading assessment. So we're going to build on from the same um, text that we've just looked at but we're going to look at the whole of the actual reading assessment based on those texts as well and at least we should feel a bit more confident when it comes to our question 15 understand what the examiner is looking for and the final one have feedback in preparation for the real reading assessment so if you are actually thinking about doing your reading assessment soon do make sure you get that feedback if you're not getting the feedback you need from your teacher or whoever it is that might be supporting you with this please do try and uh, get in contact with us, subscribe, join our membership, and then that way you'll be able to access all the benefits that come with it as well. If you need any additional support or help, the new videos will be added every single week. Alternatively, leave us a comment below or visit our partner channel, Book on Teaching, for more lessons and guidance on all things English. Thanks ever so much for listening, guys, and all the best for your work and revision in the future. Bye bye.